You're going to break limits this year. And you're going to set new records. Financial limits, mental limits, psychological limits. You're going to make more money this year than last year. There is a God that with us. The God that Ben Steele is with us. El Shaddai is with us. This year, the God of heaven has crossed over with you. The God that can consume the enemy has crossed over with you. We are not in this battle by ourselves. I see lands being purchased. I see homes being purchased. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither have it entered the heart of man. The things I have ordained for you for 2020. You know, every time I'm standing here, I get very emotional for different reasons. Because God has been so good to me. God has been so good to me. Most of my friends, they're either in prison or in the grave. Or live a very confused life. But God has rescued us. I say God has rescued us. And we have every reason to shout. So can we give a 30 second, give him a big shout that you make it in 2020. Come on. You, you're here for 2020. Let the devil know that you are here. Let him know that you will live a significant life. A life on purpose. A life on target. A life full of inspiration. Praise God. God spoke to us. You know, um, every year, I believe that um, God has a word for every local church. And I believe every pastor should, should seek the mind of God and ask God, what are you saying um, to the people that you're leading? That's what I was taught. I was taught by this by mentor, so my wife and I will continue this. We believe that it's important for we to, to live by the word of the Lord. Amen. I said we should live by the word of the Lord. We, we should live by the word of what God is saying. Let's go to First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. We should be a people that live by the word of the Lord. It says, And the children of Ishaka, which were men, they had understanding of the times. Say times. Say times. These men had understanding of the times. And I, I taught you that there are three times mentioned in the Bible. They were called chronological time. This is the watch, that the, the clock, chronological time. And then we also have what are called um, Kairos. Say Kairos. Kairos time. This is a time that God already ordained. There's nothing you can do about it. God already said it. It's going to happen and it will happen. Amen. Like Jesus, um, even though Jesus doesn't have an idea when he's coming back, but the father knew exactly. Come on. When his son will split the clouds. That's, that's Kairos time. Amen. The other time is what I call creative time. It's a creative time. Creative time is a time that, that you can get before God and God can breathe the word in your heart. He can breathe an inspiration in your mind. And when you act in that, God creates a time for you to function. He created a time for you to function. We see that in the life of, of Mary, the mother of Jesus. The Bible tells us that, um, that they came to, him, came to Jesus and said that they're out of wine. They are out of wine. There is no wine. Jesus said, woman, my time has not come as yet. My, my time has not come. Come, my, my Kairos time has not come as yet. But his mother, who knew about this man, the mother told the disciples whatever he told to do. And she tapped into creative time. A moment where Jesus manifests what was inside of him. And sometimes in life, we cannot afford, we cannot just wait. We have to manifest using our faith. Come on. What God put in our heart. We cannot wait for the, 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 the temperature to change. We cannot wait for the environment to change. We have to dare to believe what God has spoken to us in our heart. 
And when we act in what he said in our spirit, Papa God move and create a time. We also see this also happen when God, this is also, this theologian is this question they had about this one. Um, it seems like God has reserved in his heart a moment when his children can be creative. Come on. It seems that actually in the Bible, where God has reserved a place in his mind that when his children act on the word of God, he can create a special moment for people of faith. We see that there's a man in the Bible named, named Hezekiah. You know the story. God told Elijah, a, um, Isaiah, go until Hezekiah, he's going to die. Kairos time. Go until Hezekiah. Gonna, and the calendar of God, from my perspective, you're going to die. But the Bible says Hezekiah turned his face towards God. Turned his face towards the wall. And he interceded. And he remind God of a promise that he made to David that as long as there's a sun in the heavens, someone from the seed of David must be on the throne. And he told God this prayer. He said, God, the last time I check, I am the only seed of David. If I die, the scriptures will be broken. The by I'm, Come on, say creative time. Say creative time. The Bible said God told Isaiah, Isaiah, go back and tell the man, I'm giving him 15 more years. The Bible tells us that the man, the man reigned for 15 years. And the, the day that the man, wife, give birth to a child, he dropped dead. And today, the ultimate seed of David. Is on the throne. I said today the ultimate seed of David. Who am I talking to? I said today the ultimate seed of David. Is on the throne. His name is Jesus. Can you say Jesus? Can you say Jesus? And he lives forever. He reigns forever. He's the monarch of the universe. No one vote him in. No one vote him out. Heaven and earth respond to him. The galaxies respond to his thoughts. The mighty king. But it said the children of Ishakar, they had understanding of the times. And because their understanding of the times, what happened to them? All their brethren were the commandment. So basically, um, those who have insight into the times they have an advantage in life so that's why we we, we wait in the Lord and, and God gave us words and with, with those words we, we believe those words and we, we, we pilot our life and we trust what God is saying can you say amen we trust the Lord say I trust the Lord and then let's go quickly to um, Second Chronicles 2020. Second Chronicles 2020. Mande de Bruko Shata. And there are two principles that we want to take from that for 2020. Say 2020. 2020. You know, I was thinking about this, you know. I was talking to my wife about this yesterday. Um, God, you will never figure God out. I hope you really come to the conclusion that he's smarter than you. <laughs> and he doesn't, he doesn't live in the obvious. He doesn't live in the obvious. You know, I could have simply said to myself, you know, 2020, perfect vision. Wow. I know that wasn't the word of the Lord. It's too obvious. I say it's too obvious. Too obvious. And then I listened to Tony Robinson. I like him. He said 2020 is, is the year of setting goals 
and, and perfect vision. I said, there's no way God can give Tony Robinson the word for living faith. I'm Brian Tracy. Brian Tracy, 2020 is, is setting goals and, and dreaming big. I said, there's no way the word of the Lord will not come from this Eden. It's too obvious. Come on, say it's too obvious. See, God hide himself. Then give you the key to find him. He hide himself and give you the key to find him. My God. And the key is the Holy Ghost. One of the things we're going to pray in tongues more this year. We're going to break limits in speaking in tongues this year. I say we're going to break limits while, as we speak in tongues this year. Two principles from the scripture here. It said, and they rose early in the morning and they came forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. Now these are, there were four kings coming against Israel. Four kings. I want you also to put in your spirit right now. I will go into this more maybe in February. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 1 to 5. You put it in your spirit, in your in your own personal time. You, you're reading that, and you you, you 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 digest it. Okay, it's powerful. And um, so, there's four kings came against Israel. Jehoshaphat was nervous; he was afraid. Like we get something afraid, we don't know what to do. We get overwhelmed. And uh, but it was a word that came to him. And um, a, a prophet was among them, and they prophesied, and they give Jehoshaphat the word. And the word was, Jehoshaphat, this battle you will not fight, because the battle belonged to the Lord. And the, and the, and the prophetic word was, what, send the musicians, send the worshipers, not, it is amazing, it is amazing, there's some politician I lost respect for. No, I don't know, don't stone me, don't stone me. And don't write me no email. I lost respect for President Obama. We make fun of Jesus. When he said, he looked at the, he, 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 he mocked this verse. He said, it's the worst military strategy. When God told the Israelites, don't fight. Send the musician. And have the musicians say, praise the Lord. His mercy endures forever. He said, can you imagine if I implement the strategy? If God told you to do it, you do it. This king did this. And he won. The ways of men are inferior to the ways of God. I said the ways. You know we know that man have said God told him to do things and you see the result. When this king implement this strategy, what happened? The Bible says when the enemy, when Israel came up, the enemy was completely destroyed. Because God sent ambushmen in the midst. I say hallelujah. When God gives you instruction, doesn't matter how foolish it is, if it is God. Remember no, the word if, if it is God. If it is God. Come on. But don't mock someone who is acting and the instruction of God. Come on. Are you in this place here? No, no, come back, come back, come back. No, come back. Don't say the bomber. Come back, come back in this room here. You're back in this room here. Don't write no emails. I like a bomber, but don't write no emails. Praise God. But it said here, it said here, um, he said, oh Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. In 2020, God wants to establish you. Live in faith, God wants to establish you mentally, emotionally, physically, 
in your home. He wants to establish you. Let's go quickly to, to Psalms 112. Psalms 112, verse 1. So God wants to establish us in 2020. He wants to establish, and we're going to see the heart of the man who is established. Can you read it for me? Verse 1, 1, 2, 3, go. Yeah. His delight greatly in his commandment. Next verse. It tells what, what happened. It says, his seed shall be what? Mighty, come on, on the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Next verse. Wealth and riches. Sh oh my God. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is a man whose heart is established in the Lord, his heart is, is say in 2020, my heart shall be established in the Lord. He said, wealth and riches have been in South verse 6. Read verse 6 for me. One, two, three, go. Uh-huh. Come on. The righteous or his righteousness shall be an everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tithings. His heart is fixed. Come on. Trusting in the Lord. His heart is fixed. His heart is set. He's not trying to figure these things out. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. In 2020, God wants us to trust him like never before. Trust him. Trust him. Then in verse 8, he said, his heart is what? Established. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until, what happened? Until he see his desire upon his enemies. His enemies. God wants to bring judgment to your enemies. It's too quiet in this place here. I said, God, I want to bring judgment on your enemies. No, your enemies are not people. Your enemies are forces. Mediocrity is an enemy. Sickness is an enemy. Procrastination is an enemy. And we're going to release faith. We're going to have breakthrough in this realm. We're going to, we're going to come against every spirit of stagnation. Everything they want to Want us to settle into mediocrity. We don't come against those things. Because our heart is established. So he want us. He want our heart to be established. Set. Set on the Lord. Set on the Lord. I'm not going to move because there's a new bill show up. I'm not going to move because some new pain show up. I'm not, I'm not going to move. I'm going to let my heart be set on the Lord. Come on. Fix on the Lord. Let's go back to the 2020. Second Chronicles. First Chronicles, second Chronicles. 2020. Another thought. So the first thought that God wants us, our heart to be established. So pray that this year, Lord, I pray that my heart will be established. Establish. I'm not going to waver because something, something new happened. I'm not going to give up my, on my dream because there's a delay. Why? My heart is established. Amen? I also, I also want to encourage you that the grass are not green on the other side. Are you hearing me here? You know, oh, the grass is greener on the other side. There's only one problem with the other side. You are going there. You're taking you on the other side. Come on. If your heart is not established here, it wouldn't establish on the other side. Because you go there. Who am I talking to here? So, so don't, don't, don't believe the, the, the lies of the devil. You know, I told you before, I was a number of years ago. The ministry was going to, I mean, it was bad. That year was bad. I mean, my wife was saying to, to me, 
I was, you know, and the ministry, I mean, I think it was around Christmas season too. No, no, no. But it was bad. It was bad. It was bad, man. There was no money coming in. And, and my, my preaching engagement was counseling. I mean, it was bad. My wife said, honey, we got to do something. There's no money. There's no money in the account. I mean, we were three months behind on our rent. You know, at one time, at one time, they were, we had peanut butter, but we, we didn't have any bread. And one time we had bread but no peanut butter. And then the lights, the lights was cut off. And the kids were younger. And they thought, wow, this is camping. This is camping. Camping. We, we, we had like fire, we had some fire in the house, you know, candles. They were excited. They thought it was camping. No, we were just broke. But in the midst of that, I received a letter. From Toronto, a church of 600 members. They said, Pastor Weeks, we have a missionary. We have missionaries around the world. We're going to start off paying you $90,000 a year. We're going to give you housing allowance and put your kids to whatever school you want. I said, this is breakthrough. That's what we've been praying about, Lord. Maybe all of time speaking in tongues, that's what we'll do return. I said, man, this is, I'm like, this is, this is God. This is God. This is God. This is God. Uh, but I decided, I called Apostle Charles about it. He said, forget it. <laughs> this is, no. Pray about it first. Say, yeah, pray about what? This is, this is God. This has to be God. Okay, there's no food here. This is God speaking to us, honey. This is God. To pray about it. And I heard this words coming in my spirit. Never heard before. It's are you are you a shepherd or are you a hireling? Didn't like the word hireling that much. So I use my brain and I find the English dictionary. I did and I know Hebrew, no Greek. I decide to study what the word hireling mean. And it means someone who is getting paid for wages. And it also means that the one that hire you can fire you. I ripped that letter up. But we're still broke. I thought immediately when I make that decision for God, the heavens will be open. Prosperity will come. Money will show up. I was still broke for another couple of months. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. In one year, the church closed down. The church I was supposed to go to, gone. <laughs> There's a way that seems right to a man. But the end, and God start to teach me. How to think different. God started to teach me some principles about finances. God started to teach me about different streams of income. Who am I talking to? God started to teach me, don't let your church determine your income. God started to teach me some things I didn't know before. I thought I know, but I didn't know before. Not to let your wonderful church determine if you're going to smile or not. God started to teach me, you have giftings in you. And it was my landlord that really helped me, Bill Baines. He said, Pastor Weeks, I don't understand. You're three months behind on your rent. I came to your meeting downtown. There was a man trapped in a wheelchair. You pull him up to the wheelchair. How can we have all this power to heal the sick? You can't, you can't use that same power to pay your bills. Hey. 
a, a, I said, God, something is wrong. God said, yes, something is wrong. <laughs> God said, how come you have all this power to, to pull folks in the wheelchair? You can't pay your bills. Now I started to learn about conversion. That, that the spiritual laws need to be converted. Spiritual blessings can be converted. Who am I talking to? It's not long spiritual laws not meant to just give you goosebumps. But they can become tangible. Amen. And God said, give me ideas. Ideas to write books. Ideas to think outside the church. Ah. We got to think outside the box this year. We cannot live by our natural imagination. We cannot live by our natural thoughts. Because they, they, can be, be, they can be limited. But our God can do things supernaturally. Supernaturally. I say supernaturally. So I make a decision to stay. I wish I could say that things have been better roses, but guess what? I have grown. I also learned something. It's not the breakthrough that really brings um, joy to the face of God. It's how much you have changed. This is a good word. This is a good word. This is a good word. It, it, it's how much. You see, pressure is used to produce diamonds. It's how much you have changed. How much your inside has changed. How much the pressure has molded you to act like Jesus. To speak like Jesus. To be bold like Jesus. Come on. Um, this, this message is blessing me right now. So it is how much you have changed. If we are still the same the way we used to be in 2017, 18, 19, there's a problem. We should go from glory, come on, to glory. And there's a grace that God has, has granted us this year. So our heart can be established. Our heart is established. So my heart is established. So the next verse, so we see here, um, God going to have to give us supernatural establishment. He wants our heart to be established supernaturally. That nothing move us. Nothing move us. We don't, we don't just believe God and stay in faith and, and Sunday morning and Monday morning we change. We stay, we stay established. We, our heart is fixed. Say my heart is fixed. Come on, say in 2020, my heart will be fixed, trusting in the Lord. Let's get back to 2 Chronicles 2020. Oh, my goodness. Are you in this place? The next principle is said here, it said, um, believe in the Lord, you are God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets. I, I saw, and here we go again. Don't stone me. Don't send me no email. I'm not going to read them. I was so blessed to see some of my mentors in the gospel laying hands on Donald Trump yesterday. Mm, blessed by that. Some of my mentors putting hands on him and prophesying the word of the Lord over him. A lot of things about Trump I don't like. But when, when mentors, man and woman of God, he humble, he humble his heart to allow man of God, not some Hindu person, not some Jewish person, don't stop me, not, not, not some Muslim person. These, these are mentors of mine. I know all these people here. This guy here, Pastor Bishop Tutorial. Apostle, Apostle Brad Red, I'm going to go and submit his ministry to this guy here. This, this is Justin Cantor. 
He's a tremendous man and woman of God. That he have, he have allowed them to lay hands on him. He have other issues. Remember, remember no, he, we did, they didn't put him to be a Sunday school teacher. He's not a preacher. These are men and women of God. I was blessed by that. As a man of God, because I knew what happened to me when you lay hands on me. There were like power flowing to me. When, when believers, listen to me. When we get gathered together and we hold hands and we pray and we release words of heaven, there can be a correction in the hearts of people. Oh, come on. So let's go back again. Um, it, said, it said, believe, believe the prophets. Believe his prophets. And you shall what? Prosper. So there will be a supernatural prosperity coming to God's people. Now prosperity doesn't mean just money. It means everything that makes your life full. Anything that being a, oh boy, that caused your life to be tasteful. Things that make your life tasteful. Say tasteful. Now, have you ever, have you ever, um, whew, drink soup that lack flavoring? I, I have, I, I have been to those homes. Dear Lord, and you have to smile. I mean, what happened to the flavor? And, and you assume, you assume you just store the thing. Because it's a possibility is in the bottom. And you store, and you store, and you taste, but there is no flavor. But I come to prophesy over somebody that God is going to make your life full of flavor. Tasteful. Tasteful. Say tasteful. I mean, when you come in contact with people, they could feel the, the flavor that coming from your life. I follow me here. This is possible. This is possible that, that, that God could be so much on your life that people become affected by it. You know, years ago, I did a wedding of Maria's cousin. Um, one of the Musa's family in Lisa in, in, in West in um, West Bank. I'm doing the wedding and I'm just talking because I'm a preacher. You know, I'm not gonna do a wedding and just be normal. I'm preaching like I'm doing right now. And this man came to me with his wife crying. He said, Well, while you were speaking, there was something in your words that caused me to cry. Amen. You can live your life in such a way that even your touch affects people's life. Because what's coming from you is flavor. You, you could bring flavor to people's life. And people's life, they're so tasteless. Just want some seasoning. There are some Christians whose life is so tasteless. Need some seasoning. Some folks, that's why I encourage you to smile. Some folks, man, you, you, you don't know, prefer pastor, man. You things have to look at some of you guys' face, man. You can just practice smiling, man. I'll put a mirror here sometime. You're like, whoa, that's me? Yes, I've been telling you for years. <laughs> just practice smiling. Go into the mirror. <laughs> And practice smiling. Just practice it. It would, do, it would open doors for you. Some folks, their face, like if they smile, they're going to crack. Come on, man. So, 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 so God wants to 
um, bring us into, into supernatural prosperity. Fullness. Say fullness. With, with flavor, with flavor, with, with flavor. That's 2020. Glory be to God. Say 2020. And then we're going to John 2020. And that will be supernatural manifestation of the kingdom of God. Supernatural manifestation of the kingdom. Oh, because it's a supernatural visitation. Supernatural visitation. Supernatural visitation. Supernatural visitation. That's number three in 2020. John 2020. Read it for me. One, two, three, go. Oh, come on. Yeah. Yes. Woo. It's a choir here going. And, 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 when, when, and when he said, he said he, he show unto them his hands that the price is paid. And his side. Then the disciples were glad. Not sad. Glad. When they saw the Lord. When they saw the Lord. So expect God to visit you. In dreams, in, 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 um, in physical visitation. I believe that. I believe that. Hallelujah. We believe that, believe that, believe that. I, I, uh, I forgot to, to give you another one. Um, Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 5. We're going to have this in the bulletins for you could just see it more clearly. Second Samuel chapter 5 verse 20. And in the notes, this can be on to the first, under the first one. A, a supernatural prosperity. And um, David, David, David came to a place called Belperism. This is powerful. Read it for me. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Come on. Woo! Yeah. Come on. Belperism, it's a place of memorial. God want to grant you Belperism this year. A, a, a certain types of miracle that you remember. A, a certain types of miracle that you will remember. Like Joshua, he's my Belperism. Let's get here. Every time I see him, I know God is good. I need no convince. I need no angel to visit me. He's a Belperism. It is something so miraculous. And this is so powerful. And, and David, God, God want to grant you belperism this year. He is falling deaf ears here. I said, God want to grant you belperism this year. A certain types of miracle, a certain type of manifestation that, that you will remember. You need no one to convince you, you know, hey, hey, this is my Belperism here. And David came to Belperism, okay, because he'd been there before. And David smote them there. And said, the Lord have brought forth upon my enemies before me. As the breach of waters. Therefore, he called the name of that place, Balperism. He called that place. What David did, the enemies, who was after him? And David said, all I have to do is take them to Balperism. I will lead them to Balperism. I will lead them to the place where God has delivered me before. Because the place that God delivered you before, in that place there are other breakthroughs. In that testimonies, there are other testimonies. 
is like clusters of miracles at Belparism. Who am I talking to here? So David knew if I could take them to Belparism, the place of breakthrough. He said, if that's the way God break in on my enemies, like the breach of water, like the breaking foot of water. Well, I'm from the Caribbean. One time, man, I was in the village. And we were told on the radio, stay in the house because storm is coming. But when you're a kid, I get fascination with the storm. I like to see coconut trees going 400 miles an hour. Away from me. Going like a rocket. Like, wow, this is awesome. Coconut trees just going in the air. Lampposts flying like a missile. So this verse speaks up volumes to me. But one time I was there and we saw water coming down the mountain. And the water was pushing down the mountains. So when I read the scripture, David said that God, see the here's the word breach. Breach is too weak. Oh boy. The actual Greek said it's a breaking forth of waters. God gonna break out on your enemies. I said, God gonna break out on your enemies like the gushing out of waters. Like the gushing out of waters. At Belparism, at Belparism, at Belparism, the place of breakthrough, the place of breakthrough. Because in that place, there are more breakthroughs. In that place, there's more testimonies. Who am I talking to? In the place is where God has delivered you one time, but he can do it again because it is your Belparism. It's a place you can, you can receive ins inspiration from. You can remind yourself that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because he delivered me 16 years ago and gave me Belparism this time. Because he haven't changed. He will do the same thing to me. God say he want to give you Belparism this year. Belparism also could be the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord. Do you know how in this little church here, do you know how many type of miracles happen in this church here? Sister, stand up. Stand up. Come here. Come here. Let me share this testimony with you. This is a bell prison. You don't, need, you don't need to go to Texas. You need to go to Africa. Every time I see this woman, I, I, it's a picture of bell prison for me. A number of years ago, um, she was in a school, and the because university here is a business. The school system is a business, and and she was about you know the, the, the folks from from the Caribbean come here, and for some reason the tuition is twice as much, you know, and how many times? Three times as much. So they have to work and work and work and raise the money and go to school. And she's about five, how much? Five thousand dollars? Yeah. Six, five thousand dollars in debt. And the school was challenging her and saying her, it, they want to take advantage of her. But we stood up as a family and we start to make prophetic declaration that every demon of injustice would fall. She went to home group. And while she was going through the home group, a member of the church was also going through the home group. And she said she had a thought to go to the bank and withdraw $5,000 and bring it to home group. Um, I, I don't know how many folks go to home group $5,000. I don't know how many folks go to church with $5,000. This woman went to home group with five grand. And at home group, she was, we were praying for her. You know, at the home group. Now, we don't pray for her at the home group. And the lady said, now I know where I have this money. And pulled pull the zip out and give her the, do you hear me here? 
Melporism. Thank you. Next time we have home groups, you better, you better show up. You never know what would happen a living faith type of home group. That's a bell parism. That's a bell parism. It's a, it's a place of miracles. And when you hear those testimonies, hope come to your heart. If it happened one time, it can happen to me. Who am I talking to? We see David. 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 Um, he, he went to see his spiritual father named Samuel. And um, Saul and his soldiers were trying to. I'm saying Bell Prism can be a place. It can be an experience. It can be a place where there's clusters of miracles. Come on. But it's a miracle that you remember. And, and David was at Bel. Uh, are you in this place yet? Uh, uh, am, am, am I boring you? Oh, thank you. I want to bore you, but I go and sleep. So, so watch, watch, watch this. It's a place. It's a place you can go to, and in the place there are testimonies. It's a place of breakthrough. So David, David, Saul was after David to kill David, and David went. David went. To see his spiritual father Samuel. And Samuel, Samuel had what I call an, an anointing around him for protection. And the Bible said when David went there, there was the company of prophets, and Samuel was overseeing this Bible school, and David was there, and Saul sent his soldiers to, to capture David, to kill him. And when Saul soldiers came there, they came under Belperism. They came under the influence of the, the anointing of Samuel. And they couldn't touch David. They was at his Belperism. Come on, talk to me. I'm closing here. I'm closing here. And, and then we also see here that Saul gets so upset. Saul sent not as troops of soldiers to capture David. When they came, they came under the same atmosphere. Saul said, enough is enough. I'm going myself. Saul went there himself and the same thing happened. Come on. He came under the canopy. He came under the atmosphere of Belparism. Couldn't touch David. Couldn't touch David. And David came to Belparism. And David smote them there. And said, the Lord has broke forth upon my enemies before me. It means that you will see it happen. As the breach of waters. As the breaking forth of waters. And he called the place Belparism. So we have that one. And then with the last one, we're going to Acts, Acts 2020. Acts 2020. I must finish Acts 2020. Because we're going we're gonna to start our prayer and fasting tomorrow night. I want to encourage you to come out and we're going to fast and we're going we're gonna to dedicate um, the whole month um, to the Lord. We're going to dedicate the whole month to the Lord. Give, give the month of January to the Lord as a seed. Acts 2020. Read it for me. One, two, three, go. Yeah, come on. Come on. Yes. We must have a, a fresh passion to preach the gospel. We must have a fresh, what? Passion to preach the gospel with conviction. We cannot hold back nothing. We're going to believe that we're going to win more souls this year than any time in our ministry. I said we're going to win more souls this year than any time in our ministry. I said we're going to win more souls this year, come on, than any time in our ministry. We're not going to hold back. We're going to go for it this year. I said living faith, we're going to go for it this year. We're going to have strategies for evangelism. We're going to have teams for evangelism. And we're going to hit the streets for evangelism. 
Come on, talk to me here. We, we're going to invade Kelowna with the gospel. I said we're going to invade Kelowna with the gospel. We, we cannot hold back. We're going we're gonna to invade Kelowna. We're going to invade Vernon. We're going to invade the nation with the gospel. We will not hold back in 2020. I said we will not hold back. We're going to preach it with the fire and in conviction. The last scripture it's, is also a warning. Luke 9, Luke, Luke, Luke 9, 62. Luke 9, 62. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Are you in this place here? The Lord is, who's speaking here? Come on, who's speaking here? And Jesus said unto them, No man, said no man, having put his hands to the plow and look back, is fit for the kingdom of God. We cannot pull back. We cannot pull back in our giving. We cannot pull back in our conviction. We cannot pull back in our prayer life. We cannot pull back. In 2020, I want to challenge you. You know, one thing I want to, I want to put before you, that I want to go into more um, in the next weeks and months to come, is that I want to challenge you personally. Break limits in speaking in tongues. Break limits. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. If you haven't prayed in tongues for five minutes straight without speaking English, set that, that as your goal. Come on, set spiritual goal. One of the spiritual goals want to set so we can break limits and set new records is speaking in tongues. It could be five minutes. Where's my phone? My phone is here. Thank you. You set your timer. Five minutes, and you don't speak in tongues. Not in English, not in German, not in Spanish, not in Patwa, in tongues. And then the timer goes off. Then, then you, tomorrow, you break that, and then you go for 10 minutes. I remember the first time I prayed in tongues for one hour changed my life. There's something inside of you. You break dimension in the spirit. You tap into realms of glory. It wasn't even uh, uh, available. Amen? So that's the thing we want to do this year. And, um, and we're going to do two things. We're going to finish up. We're going to take our offering. And then I want to... And then, and then I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Those of you who weren't here on Sunday, when, when was the cut of the greatness? Wednesday, I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. That if you have to go, you can go. I want to pray for those of you who, who want to, to be anointed. Because every king must be anointed for the season that they're about to see. Hallelujah. I want to have those who will help with the communion. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet. In our year of breaking limits and setting records. <laughs> Glory be to God. To purchase your complete copy of this life-changing message or other messages from Apostle Everton Weeks, visit our online store at mlmi.org that's mlmi.org or by phone at 1-250-763-2993 come join us live Kelowna BC Canada or any of our church locations and remember life without purpose is just an experience <laughs>